Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we will be taking a look at Overwatch League 2020 season week 15. I'll be giving my picks, my predictions and all that good stuff. It is the final weekend before the May tournament kicks off next weekend, next Friday to be exact. So you will be getting some stuff then when we get to that. But for now, we're going to jump in and take a look at my picks. So let's pull them up right now and let's go over them. To start, we have three matches in the APAC region for Saturday. We have the Seoul Dynasty taking on the Chengdu Hunters. Seoul Dynasty coming off the backs of a huge win over the Shanghai Dragons. Um, it, it really changed the narrative around the Seoul Dynasty. They aren't this team who is just... Uh, abysmal and, and failing. They're a team who has shown that they can put up a fight, that they can beat the best teams. And it isn't just meta dependent. It is that they had to get their act together, fix some things up, clean some things up, and now they're looking a lot better as a whole. I really like what we've seen out of the Soul Dynasty um, from last weekend. They've obviously had some ups and downs, but overall, I think that they should be able to beat the Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu Hunters are, in my opinion, the weakest team in the APAC region. Soul Dynasty are somewhere in the top four. Um, you know, you can make arguments. Are they uh, behind New York? Are they behind Guangzhou? Um, they're certainly behind Shanghai. I think people would, would agree with that, even though they did beat them. Chengdu has also beaten Shanghai. So it is certainly something to look at. But the Seoul Dynasty are a team who I think is showing that they can win big matches. They are a team who is looking to right their ship. And I think that they are on the right track to start doing that. Um, and a win over the Hunters would definitely help them in the seeding for the May tournament. Next is the London Spitfire against the Shanghai Dragons. I liked what we saw out of London last weekend. Um, overall, for a team that hadn't played in a while, a team that we don't have a ton of footage on and who we don't really know what they're up to overall. Uh, but they have to play the Shanghai Dragons. They are the behemoth of the region. They uh, should not be too scared of the London Spitfire. Um, the Dragons still look very good, still look very clean. They're not going to be the top team most likely uh, this uh, tournament, but they are still a very good team and a very strong team, and I think that they should be able to uh, easily beat the Spitfire. What I think will probably be the best match of the APAC region for Saturday is NYXL taking on the Hangzhou Spark. We have no announcements about the Hangzhou Spark yet. We don't know if they are, are bringing in any of these Runaway players, Hacksaw, uh, that I've been talking about, um, and, and other people have talked about it as well. Mr. X talked about it in the most recent episode of Plat Chat, and it's a very interesting potential uh, pickup that I think is one that is certainly certainly possible, but for now, the Sanjo Spark team does not have Hacksaw, and I think with what they have, New York should be able to win this match. I think that their loss to the charge last weekend uh, was really their own doing. Um, for the most part, I think the charge have looked very good, but I think New York did a lot of things wrong that match. They got cocky, they got full of themselves, and they paid the price for that. I think they should be able to correct themselves and right the ship. Hopefully, uh, for them, Nene is able to return to the team uh, somewhat soon. If you are not unaware, he had a surgery in North America, in New York, um, I think before everything shut down, so... He is kind of trapped, which is very unfortunate, really. Like, if there's one place you don't want to be trapped um, in the U.S. right now, it's New York. You especially don't want to be trapped there if you don't know anybody, and uh, you're, you're really just, you have no choice but to be stuck there. So hopefully he'll be able to go back and, and rejoin his team soon. Um, but I like what the Hungju Spark have, but I don't think they'll be able to beat New York. Um, but we shall see. Moving on to the North America games. The first one is the Vancouver Titans taking on the Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws are not a team that I pick very often, but I will be picking them over the Vancouver Titans. Um, the Titans have been the Titans ever since they built this new Western roster. Um, it hasn't been the most impressive. I would expect them to expand their roster soon. They kind of have to. They have to have seven players under contract um now that the roster regulations have changed slightly they can have players on four have players on whatever um you know th th there's some new changes to the roster stuff but 
this is a team who I do expect to pick up at least one more player because they have to at some point. Um, and I think that they are a team to look out for to potentially start to build in the right direction. But the Houston Outlaws, I think, are a better team. I think the meta this weekend could favor them if we start seeing some Sombra Doomfist. Obviously, there's no May in the meta this weekend, so May McCree won't be played. Who knows what the meta exactly is going to be. You have no Moira to be able to heal, you know, a ton of burst healing. So I think this could be a good weekend for the Outlaws meta-wise. And I think that that is something to look out for there. I don't think that the Titans will be too much of a challenge for the Outlaws. Um, I don't think it'll be a 3-0. I think it should be a 3-1, maybe a 3-2. Um, so I guess it could be a bit of a challenge. But the Outlaws should be able to win this series based on what I have seen from them so far. The next match for North America of the weekend is the Florida Mayhem taking on the Washington Justice. Florida Mayhem look really good. I mean, there's there's no... There's, there's nothing else to it. I mean, they have looked very good. They have looked ready. And they have looked prepared. And they're, they are a team that I am looking out for, uh, definitely. I think that they are, are looking good. They should be excited for what they have, have brought to the table so far. They have been one of the best teams in North America so far. The Justice, no Corey, no Stratus. Uh, as I'm recording this video, don't even know who they're damage dealer is going to be they haven't announced anybody yet so uh, who knows what, what's gonna happen there but i think the mayhem should be able to win this one pretty easily next is the la gladiators taking on the boston uprising uprising uh signed a new player this week um because brucin has retired so no more brucin on the team which is unfortunate but as i mentioned they did sign a new player and that is punk uh, so he's their new flex tank player and he is an australian player who comes into this team to take on that flex tank role gladiators should be able to win this match pretty easily i still don't have a ton of confidence in their dps duo or trio i guess in the dps lineup mirror jaru have not really impressed me too much but they're managing as well as they can. The Boston Uprising are, are not a good team. The Gladiators shouldn't have too much difficulty, if any at all, taking out the Uprising. Final match for Saturday is my big pick for Saturday. San Francisco Shock taking on the Atlanta Reign. Obviously, we all remember in the season playoffs last season when the Atlanta Reign knocked the San Francisco Shock into the lower bracket. Obviously, they have not played since then. I'm sure the Shock are looking for revenge against the Reign. This is a very, very, very interesting matchup. I think if the Atlanta Reign play the correct roster and they're fielding their, their best players, which I don't think they've been doing recently, personally, this is a match that I think should be very, very close. I really like the matchup you have in the DPS lineup with Edison and Erster, assuming they're the ones that play, matching up against Striker and Rascal, Striker and Architect, Striker, Striker and Ons, Rascal, or whatever, whatever combination of Shock DPS that you see, but of course I want to see Striker. Striker, I think, is the best one on the team. Whatever lineup that you run there, I think the DPS battle is very, very good. I think you have a very good tank battle there, no matter who plays. But overall, I just think the Atlanta Reign's style is very good against the Shock. I think the Shock um, struggled against the Reign last season in, in their matches. They had a very close match in Stage 3, I believe. Uh, of last season and then of course they lost them in the playoffs so it's been a very close all-time series between these two teams I, I still favor the shock i think the shock have looked overall better but i don't think the shock have looked incredible i think the hero pools have been a bit of a, a, a struggle for them they've talked about having some struggles and some difficulties obviously a lot of players on that team from south korea a lot of these players away from home uh, in South Korea, when you only have two Western players on the team now, uh, with Moth and Super. So you have a, a group of Korean players that you're with, but at the same time, uh, you lose a lot of that uh, feeling of being able to do stuff. You're stuck inside a lot. There's obviously a lot of difficulties that come with it. So the Shock have been struggling a bit, but they've been winning. They've been playing well. Um, the Rain have been... Uh, they've been okay. Uh, they've done some questionable things, uh, not playing the players who they probably should play sometimes. But when they win, they win big. Now, this is going to be one of their biggest tests. 
Um, they they have been able, they have not been able to beat the Fusion yet. This is a team who I think that they match up better against than the Fusion. This is a match that the Rain can win, but I'm going to pick the Shock because I think it is the better team and it is the safer pick. Um, and I think that they will win. It's not just because it's a safer pick. I think they're the better team right now. Uh, I have more faith in them. And I think that that is something that really works in the Shock's favor. So, picking the Shock. Moving on to Sunday, we have the Guangzhou Charge taking on the Chengdu Hunters as the first of two matches in the Asia Pacific region. I think the Guangzhou Charge win that one. I think Guangzhou is the better team. <laughs> um, I don't think it's much of a challenge for them. Chengdu, who knows what they're going to do when the tournament comes around. They could surprise everybody, but I don't expect it. Charge should be able to win this one pretty easily. Hangzhou Spark taking on the London Spitfire. I am picking the Spark. This is almost my big pick game. I think it should be somewhat close. I, I like the Spark, and I've talked about it a million times. I am a Spark apologist. I will always defend the Spark and their play. Uh, I think they have they have had some very good results so far uh, this season. They've had some bad results as well. I think that this could be a match that helps them get a win under their belt, helps them potentially end May at 2-2, two and two, and put themselves in a position where if they can get that big Hacksaw signing, you're looking at the Spark as a potentially dangerous team down the stretch i like what we've seen out of them uh spitfire i've also liked but i have more faith in what i've seen out of the spark so far this season moving into the north america region i have my big pick game for sunday and that is the dallas fuel taking on the paris eternal now the paris eternal are going to be one of the most interesting teams as we reach the end of may for a number of reasons of course, May 31st is the day the day that everybody is waiting for. The day that Sparkle turns 18 and becomes Overwatch League eligible. When that happens, things may change for this team. Their fortune will probably start to go up. Eventually, they will get XE back as well, and that will also probably help this team out a lot. For right now, they're a good team that has a couple problems um, and a bit of inconsistency, but they're still a very solid team. Dallas Fuel have been a team that have been having pretty good results. Uh, they played very well against the Fusion, played very well against the Shock, but they've also had close results with the Outlaws. Um, they've had a loss to the Valiant, other than beat them later. It's it's very difficult to say for sure what's going on with the Dallas Fuel. They are a good team, um, but I think they have a couple places that hold them back, particularly in the support lineup, that I think will struggle with the Paris Eternal because I think that their DPS has been very, very good. Now, where I worry about the Paris Eternal is their main tank uh, and the fact that Fielder will be playing like 200 ping still in their support line. So I think the Eternal should win. Uh, I think the Gladiators are a, are a better team than the Dallas Fuel and the Eternal dismantled uh, the Gladiators in the last three maps. But the Fuel, I think, of the better damage duo and I think if you have a very good damage duo that's able to pressure your backline and able to pressure your main tank very well, uh, I think this could be a very interesting series between the Eternal and the Fuel. The next match is the Philadelphia Fusion taking on the Vancouver Titans. It's unfortunate. Uh, th the teams in North America were only supposed to play three uh, matches for qualification, but the Vancouver Titans, as a team that had not played any matches uh, in several weeks and that were you know, had only played four matches total, uh, play four matches in two weeks, which is not what they were necessarily supposed to do, but they have to catch up to the other teams. So they are the unlucky team uh, that plays four matches in May, the only team in North America to do so before the tournament. And of course, they have to end by playing arguably the best team in the Overwatch League, the Philadelphia Fusion. Uh, I've seen some people put them below the shock in power rankings. I, I disagree with that, and the Fusion have looked better. Uh, I think the Fusion have looked very, very good, and I don't have any reason to think that they are below the Shock until the Shock can prove that they are a better team than the Fusion are. Fusion, this could be the time we see Chips of play. Probably not, but it's possible. Um, but <laughs> we'll wait and see. Fusion look very good. They look very clean. This is a, a match that I think they should win pretty easily. A new Titans team. This is going to be their first real, real, real test. Um... They had to play, uh, you know, 
some okay teams in the past. Obviously, they, they played Houston. They played Florida. Uh, well, they will have played Houston by this point in time. They played Florida. And they played Washington. This is going to be their first match against a team that we know for sure is very good. Uh, Florida Mayhem, of course, are, are doing well, but we haven't seen them play any really incredible opponents yet. So there's still the question marks surrounding them of how strong are they really? Only time will tell. But this is a match that the Fusion should win pretty easily, I think, just because of what we've seen out of them. Final match for the weekend is the Toronto Defiant taking on the LA Valiant. Agilities and Kareev facing off against their old team. I really like the Valiant in this matchup. Uh, this is not a matchup that I thought I would like the Valiant in uh, from the beginning of the season, but I do think the Valiant should be able to win this match. I don't think it's as easy as Boston was for them last week, obviously. And I think that they will probably struggle like they did against the rain where i think the rain made a lot of issues down the stretch failing to adapt and that was what cost them the series the define are a team that we've actually seen perform pretty well we saw them perform well against the shock last week and we've seen them have good performances throughout the season and i don't want to say that the addition of cruise is is really going to change the defiant season and really turn them around but there's been a lot of talk from the very beginning of this season that the Defiant lacked a leader. They lacked a shot caller. They lacked someone who would be the person in the comms, in the game, who is going to be leading this team. I think Cruz is the perfect addition for just that. I think Cruz is that individual, and I think he has really helped this team uh, by being a leadership figure for a team that seemingly lacked one. The matchup I'm excited to see and hoping we get to see is some... Logics, KSP, McCree, or Widow, or literally anything with hit scan and click heads. I want to see that matchup. Logics was very good last weekend against the Shock. KSP is a player who I will argue till the end of this season should be in the consideration of people's minds, definitely for Rookie of the Year and possibly for MVP if this is a team that we start to see uh, have some some positive results as the season progresses i really think this will be an interesting matchup this is actually probably the best matchup of the day and i probably should have made it my big pick game because i think it's deceptively good uh i think fuel eternal will probably be a series that is, is very good as well i think that's also a good series i think it's actually a pretty good day for overwatch on sunday but valiant defiant is a series that i think is sneaky good and surprisingly tasty and juicy, and I'm very excited to see what happens in that series. But that is it for my picks for this weekend. Let me know your picks in the comments down below. Um, I'm very excited for this weekend. It's going to be pretty good. Um, also, I just want to, you know, get people's opinions on how I, I did in this video. I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter than they've been recently, so if you liked my pacing and all that kind of stuff i'll try to stick to it in the future and try to do similar things uh, as we go forward but that is all from me so thank you once again hope you're all staying safe hope you are all doing well hope everyone is somewhere where they are able to get through this situation as comfortably as possible uh, and i'm wishing everybody the best so once again thank you and i'll see you all next time Bye-bye.